Hello, and welcome back to Rainbow Magician Tarot. Tonight, <laughs> we're going to try to do something that I've never done before, <laughs> so we will see how it goes, um, but basically, uh, it is a full moon tonight. I think full moon in Leo, maybe? I could be wrong. I don't know. It's um, January 27th, uh, 8th. I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know what the date is. I think it's the 28th. Anyway, um, there's a full moon, and I had the idea to do a kind of creative ritual um, for myself where I would kind of get into a meditative state and do some finger painting with acrylics um, because I have I have um, done something a little bit similar before and I really enjoyed it um, but I thought it might be interesting to try to do that um, as kind of a healing endeavor for <laughs> uh, you guys as well kind of like a channeling sort of thing like I will be um, setting the intention to um, channel the messages that will most benefit us uh, as a collective watching this video through um, whatever intuitively I feel like painting whatever images um, kind of come up. I'm gonna just kind of be doing like some abstract finger painting, um, but we will see if at the end I'm gonna kind of like do some scrying, I guess, a little bit like within the art that I have created. Um, I have my little canvas here. It's really just a piece of like, <laughs> I think technically this is watercolor paper because this is all I have, um, and I didn't want to use like a full-on canvas, but basically I'm just gonna like be intuitively um, channeling whatever energies or messages uh, want to come through with the intention to um, receive the messages that we need here at this time um, for our high highest and greatest good. So <laughs> uh, with that being said, um, this video is gonna be a little bit different obviously um, I am going to actually um, cover over the sound for the most part because um, I'm going to be listening to um, some kind of meditative music just to kind of get me in the zone um, and I don't want that to get <laughs> uh, copyrighted so um, I'm gonna have to like superimpose like some other music or sound on top of it um, so I won't be talking while I'm actually doing the painting but you will see me um, <laughs> I don't know just you'll see me um, while I'm, I'm doing the painting um, I may or may not end up speeding it up when I'm editing we'll see um, and then at the end I will kind of do a reading with whatever has come up um, so <laughs> uh, before we dive right in. I'm um, just gonna kind of do a little smudging, um, intention setting, that kind of thing. Um, I have some sage here. So I've already kind of smudged a little bit, but we're just gonna do some more just for the ASMR <laughs> so that you have a, um, a chance to connect with this energy as well. So very well today. Might be because my fan is on. I'm just gonna cleanse the space and set the intention to A 
allow what needs to come out to be expressed, to come out and be expressed <laughs> with full safety and protection. Receiving messages that will most benefit us with this full moon energy for our highest and greatest good. And if you have a specific intention you'd like to set, then I ask you to just kind of tune in with yourself, place your hands on your heart, see what, if there's any messages that come up for you. I'm just gonna wave some crystals in front of you. <laughs> I have some selenite. into that energy. Okay. So I have some um, copper, I think. I think that's what this is. Uh, and this is really good for like purification, transmutation, alchemy. Since we're doing a creative exercise, I wanted to bring out a stone for the sacral chakra. I was really sad because I really wanted to use my peach um, zeolite, I think is what it's called, but I have no idea where it is. It was a pretty big, chunky stone, too, and it's, like, disappeared from me, so I don't know what happened to her. But instead, I have this still lovely piece of orange calcite for the sacral chakra. Okay, um... Then I have this piece of chrysocolla, which is also really good for creativity and expression. Okay. And then lastly, I only brought five crystals out today. I have this piece of briciated jasper um, just for grounding and protection okay, okay so we'll get into it I have my acrylic paints right here I also <laughs> should probably mention I have <laughs> some yoni blood that I will be using as well. Hopefully that's not too disturbing for you. <laughs> um, I will say it is kind of gross because I have it in um, a tomato <laughs> sauce jar. Um, it was the only jar that I had. Um, but yeah, it's not tomato sauce. It's uh, menstrual blood. <laughs> um, but I'm gonna probably start with that since it's more watery and kind of do like a watercolor base <laughs> with that um, watercolor. Um, and then we'll get into the acrylics. Um, and yeah, like I said, I won't be talking very much. Um, we will just be kind of vibing. <laughs> And I'll probably put some like royalty free music over um, this part so you don't just have to sit in silence uh, watching me. Um, so enjoy that and I ask that during this process that you sit back and you kind of get yourself into 
a receptive state um, and really tune in with, to this energy. Um, so actually I'm going to ask that together that before we get into it that we take a few deep breaths together okay so if you're ready if you're in a comfortable position then close your eyes and place your hands on your heart if that feels good to you you're going to take a breath you're going to imagine um, the breath you're going to imagine that you're breathing in almost like you're breathing in like your body is a bucket and you're breathing in water that's going to collect at the bottom of the bucket, which is going to be here at the base of your spine. And so it's going to fill up the bucket or maybe balloon is a better analogy, um, starting at the bottom of your stomach and it's going to fill all the way up and up and up and up, up to your head. Okay. I hope I explained that well, but we're going to do a few breaths so let's do one um, breathing in filling all the way up from the bottom to the top holding at the top breathing out okay again breathing in from the bottom to the top holding at the top breathing out Okay, one more. Breathing in from the bottom to the top. And letting go. you feel pretty synced into this energy now um, and I will now get into the next portion of this where I will be painting so just sit back and allow yourself to just kind of vibe and feel these energies um, and think of this almost I guess like a energy work kind of session except instead of um, like Reiki it's art still kind of the same idea um just a different medium so just sit back and allow yourself to receive um and we will get into it
So, I believe I have finished. Um, I'll do a close-up so you can see the whole thing. Um, and then I'll just kind of talk through what I was feeling when I was doing it and see if there's any messages that... There's like a little piece or something there. Um, that want to come through with this. Sorry, it looks like there's like something stuck in this. Okay, anyway. Um, <laughs> still a little bit wet, but I will try to do a close up. Um, and the paper is very warped, so uh, I'm just gonna have to apologize for that. <laughs> but uh, 
Okay, I'll show you a close-up of the finished thing, and then we will talk about it. Okay, so here is the finished piece. I was trying to, trying to <laughs> get the lighting to be um, not terrible, um, but this is the finished piece. Um, so if you feel like <laughs> pausing to look at it more, you can do that. Um, but yeah, we will talk about it now. <laughs> okay. So I might try to like hold it up. Honestly, like you might be able to see it a little bit better like that. Um, kind of. Um, but <laughs> this was very uh, interesting uh, to do as a process. Um, I'm not really that <laughs> experienced with like meditative painting, so I don't really feel like I stayed in a meditative state the whole time. I feel like I was kind of um, uh, I don't know, kind of in and out like thinking kind of like I would think if I was just doing a regular painting like what looks good over here what looks good over here but also kind of still letting my intuition guide me like I feel like putting this here and this here so it was an interesting process I'm not claiming to um be perfect at whatever I was attempting to do here <laughs> but it ended up being kind of interesting I will say like towards the end also I think um I stopped filming and then I kept painting a little bit because I thought I was done and then I looked at it and I was like no I need to add more so um there's a little part that I didn't film me painting but yeah towards a little bit towards the end I started getting frustrated with it <laughs> and you probably see uh in some parts I was like oh. <laughs> like there would be moments when um I'd feel kind of this like intensity of energy where I just wanted to like kind of destroy it or kind of just like rake my hands through it. So I, I did that a couple times. Um, and yeah, at the end I was like, this looks ugly. I hate it <laughs> for a good like while there. I was like, this is fucking ugly. I hate it. <laughs> and like, I was thinking very kind of, um, uh, like I wasn't, it wasn't really, um, Uh, like even though I was aware of this like process of like trying to channel these energies I was also thinking about it in like a an artist kind of way of like this doesn't look good like I need to change this so um yeah there were times when I was getting really frustrated but I think that was also part of the process you know like I think I don't know this is just kind of an experimental thing but I think um the process of this isn't to like you know disregard my own brain and my own um artistic mind and my own logical mind and my own ego really it's not trying to like get rid of that or like push that aside necessarily but more so to just kind of roll with the energies of what was coming up and see what I could kind of intentionally create with that. So, um, anyway, that's all I'm going to say about the that. But, um, yeah, we'll go ahead and kind of try to read into this a little bit. Um, the first thing that kind of caught my eye while I was painting it and looking at it now is this um, the circle here. The first thing I hadn't noticed was this circle over here. So, you have this yellow, this yellow that is kind of surrounded, kind of like trapped by this, um, black ring. So, um, 
I feel like, to me, yellow is always representative of joy. And so it is like there is this sense of joy and happiness that feels like it's, it, it is like trapped. Um, and there's like kind of no way to access it. Um, so these kind of like this good kind of easy, uh, feeling that maybe you haven't really felt in a while. You feel like it's been, um, difficult to access states of genuine joy. Um, and it's almost like you're trapped from it. Um, and then there's this blue dot in the center that kind of leads out this blue line which kind of leads out of the ring and then so blue to me represents sadness so it's kind of an interesting um paradox almost that it's like your entrance into happiness comes from sadness. <laughs> if that makes sense, because it's like, it's like this is your ticket out, like, in order to unlock this happiness, the way to get it out is to unlock, um, the way to get it out is to unlock the sadness that's within it. And then that will kind of be your, the, the, the opening of this gate that has kept you blocked for some time. So I feel like there's uh, um, potentially a lot of like um, blessings or abundance and things that you have been wanting that feel like feels like it's being blocked. Um, and I think it's like the the key to open it is to unlock whatever maybe more negative emotion has like kept that or is like um preventing you from accessing that but it's like that emotion is your kind of ticket into those things that you're wanting if that kind of makes sense it's like um Yeah, it's like the doorway into happiness is sadness. The doorway into what you want is these um, more negative emotions that you don't want, but it's like you have to um, follow them because it's like they are the seed for what you can create. It's like you have to have what you what what is unwanted in order to create what is wanted. So there's like um, this real kind of like um, like con paradox or like these polar polarity. I think is what I'm looking for. There's this um, polarity going on where you you have to pull from both polarities in order to create. You have to pull from the deepest, darkest, saddest <laughs> part of you in order to create whatever you want to create it's like you have to access that in order to have movement um it's like that is your ticket into movement that is your ticket into all the things that you've been wanting it's like it's 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 letting that kind of be known because this also it's like um if this line didn't go out this blue line didn't travel out of this dark circle this dot would be all alone but the it's like you need your um you need your your grief i want to say to like be seen you need these emotions to be seen and heard so it's like whatever um grief or sadness or um more negative emotion you feel like is keeping you blocked it's like that's the thing that is like going to be your ingredients for like what you 
are going to create but it's like you need that to be like seen by people so i feel like a lot of you might want to use that to kind of like create something um like some kind of art from it potentially um maybe you're um some kind of creative where you you know um uh i mean you could even do something like this like painting or but it doesn't have to be like it could be any kind of any anything it doesn't even have to be like traditional what we can consider art but it's like um whatever whatever it is you want to see created in your life or in the world in general it's like you are going to create it by letting your own frustrations and your own pain be seen by others in a way that then creates this change that you're looking for okay so some of you if you have like an idea for some kind of business or something potentially like um you're gonna want to be using your own story your own um yeah your own story your own experience and that's the thing that's going to draw people in it's like you have to pull from your own pain essentially and let that be seen and let that be your ticket into what it is that you want to create in your life <sighs> um I'll just go ahead and point out since it's very obvious there's also some numbers um here that i added at the last minute because i felt like something was missing and then i just I had the intuition to add some numbers for some reason so i have we have some 888 in the corner here um this is very <laughs> very warped but if you can see that 888 there and there's a little seven yellow seven here and then there's the blue four right in the middle there um which probably looks backwards to you but right here uh, so those numbers could be significant to you 8887 or four um four can represent stability um and it, we have it in the blue color so again you know equating the blue with the sadness that's like you need to find a sense of stability within your own sadness if that makes sense like it sounds kind of strange but it's like you need to find a way to ground your emotions um ground your emotions into your body and like um and like build up from the bottom <laughs> of whatever you're feeling it's like once you get to that root emotion it's like um that's the thing that you need to find stability around you know it's like you need to create a safe container for these emotions to be seen and heard and expressed um, by you or potentially by others but it's like you need to have like a sort of certain amount of structure um around yourself um to create a sense of safety for these emotions so like some techniques or like practices that you can do to kind of ground your emotions into your body um, like breath work, for instance, would be a good one, or yoga, um, anything that kind of, like, helps you become aware of the emotional states within you, but, like, in a way where it's, it's helping you feel stable in, in that, if that makes sense. Um, the 888... I'm not like that knowledgeable in numerology or anything, so these are also numbers that you might want to look up on your own. Um, but eight can talk about abundance. Um, it's kind of like the infinity symbol also. Um, 
there's an interesting like <laughs> message I've been getting today in general around time um, and I feel like it's kind of coming through with this also it's like you know because the eight is like kind of infinity it's like we all kind of exist within infinite time and it's like every moment is the same moment over and over again if that makes sense it's like every moment is like a recreation of the one moment every moment is a recreation of the now if that makes sense so it's like what a, whenever you feel like you haven't got something right you didn't do something right it's like well you have infinite tries to basically like make the now what you want it to be <laughs> if that makes sense like basically also this kind of ties into the process I was going through when doing this because there was a lot of things that I started you know kind of painting like with this green like patch over here um I it had started off being kind of like a flower um symbol and then I it was kind of like a bush and then I added like other flowers on it and then I didn't like it and then I like raked my hands through it and like it just kind of was a bunch of different things and it kept like I kept kind of like messing with it and messing with it and so it, eventually I ended up adding the numbers on top of it because I felt like it was there was something I needed to go on top of it there and so I think the message with that is like whatever you feel like you are like kind of obsessing over something like it just it's not right you're not getting it right it's like you're not running out of time because you have infinite chances in this existence because time is infinite um linear time it, like is just kind of the perception that we hold when reality time is kind of like this infinite like soup <laughs> I guess and every moment is the present moment but it's the present moment being recreated over and over and over again and so whenever you feel like you ha you can't make something right it's like first of all know that you're not running out of time because you literally have infinity um and second of all it's like you have the ability to like just completely add something else to whatever um whatever it is that you feel like isn't going right it's like you have the ability to um I want to say start over but it's not even like erasing right because like with painting you can't really erase right so it's not about erasing but it's about like just going in a different direction and like whatever you um were trying to perfect it's like suddenly that becomes the background and you're now adding something on top of it that's the main focus and that thing isn't even the focus anymore it's like that's just the background like that has no meaning anymore like this whole green like patch here it doesn't really have much meaning anymore because i added these eights on top of it so you're not even focused on this green blob whatever it was which i was getting frustrated with it's like that's not even like important anymore because you've added other things on top of it so it's about like making your landscape more interesting your environment more interesting like day after day moment after moment you're always going to have a chance to go back and tweak things and change things and create the moment that you want to create um and if you don't like it then you can 
just kind of like let it be this blurry mess that's just going to be the background image for what you like are going to put on top of it if that makes sense um you know so if there's uh, things in your life where you feel like um it's just kind of chaotic and you can't really make sense of things it's like you know ask yourself is this the focal point of this picture i'm trying to create or is it like is it just going to be a blur in the background you know like is this something that i actually want to take the time to kind of define and figure out what these actual lines are what this actually looks like this whole situation in my life that feels like too chaotic for me do i want to actually take the time to define it and figure it out or do i want to kind of just leave it where it lies right leave it where it lies and move on and let a new experience kind of exist on top of it right so it could literally mean just like you know something in your life that's too stressful that you can't figure out just like giving it up and um moving on to something else entirely um whether it's work related relationships related um whatever you know you could just you could take the time to try to meticulously like sort everything out or you could just say like you know what this is just going to be a mess right now um but i'm not gonna waste my energy trying to sort it out i'm just going to let it pass <laughs> right and then i'm gonna let it be this blur in the background as i continue forward like with this in this other completely new direction okay because instead of continuing to meticulously try to make this green blob end up being something that i wanted i was like i'm gonna add something on top of it and i got in some pink paint and i added the eights so it's like change the color <laughs> right change the color that you're working with um change uh yeah like add something that's like different than what you have already been working with um go in a new direction a more interesting direction um and don't be afraid to you know just kind of like leave the mess where it lies <laughs> and let it kind of fade into the background okay um for some of you this could just be about situations in your past that have been coming up that you can't really seem to figure out it's like don't obsess trying to figure it out okay like it will reveal itself in time if it's meant to but until then it's like what are you going to do with it are you going to obsess over it or are you going to let it fade into the background it's still there you know it's still a part of your being but it's not going to have as much of an effect on your overall picture anymore if you put your focus towards something else okay um and then with the yellow seven seven can talk about coming into alignment right um and yeah it's like that will kind of naturally happen once you once you find that stability i was talking about with um with the four uh i don't know if you can see that well in the light but with the blue four finding that stability where you feel grounded in your emotional experiences allowing your emotions to be seen and allowing yourself to create from that pain and that that sadness and allowing the mess of your past to be a mess and, and you know refocusing on a new direction of what you want to create it's like the more you do that then the more you will come into alignment and you'll see this natural alignment happen with this seven here this is the yellow seven remember i was talking about joy versus sadness here and so it's like the more stability you can give yourself uh, within these like negative feelings then the more alignment into the positive you will be able to experience here okay um yeah we have some 
red marks here that kind of looks like blood um, uh, there's also literally blood <laughs> in this painting but I'm just talking about like the appearance of it um, which I feel like um, could talk about being in the flow um, following yeah like following your your gut your intuition um, again kind of like the overall theme it's like allowing your pain almost to like guide you towards your truth and guide you towards your purpose right with this red this kind of like blood that's dripping down from this prison of <laughs> right this like locked happiness um it's like you have to let yourself bleed you know emotionally speaking um i'll let your emotions kind of bleed out and carry you towards um whatever whatever they're trying to lead you towards um and this little blue spot here kind of looks like the ocean a little bit um so it's like you know like there's so much life in the ocean <laughs> that we're not even aware of you know like we've only discovered like what like some crazy small amount of the ocean like five percent or something that might be wrong but i feel like i read that like we don't know shit about what's in the ocean right and it's like that's how we are too like we really don't know anything about like what all there is to discover within ourselves like we only know the tip the tip of the iceberg and so it's like don't get to thinking that you know everything <laughs> when you don't you know you might feel pain and you might think that this pain is like um all that you know all that is real about you but it's like you've only scratched the surface like there's so much more to discover and it, it is terrifying you know to be honest like it is a little scary um thinking about all of the stuff that we don't know that lies in the ocean and all of the stuff that we don't know that could lie within our own freaking subconscious or whatever but it's like just because you don't know what's there doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad um and there might be an assumption that whatever is there has to be bad because you've experienced so much pain that you think that everything that you're not aware of that is going on inside your mind or whatever is more pain but that might not necessarily be the case because we have this kind of like pinkish uh color down here which is kind of very like childlike um right so whatever is underneath all of this is an inner child aspect right um that does have this kind of innocence and joy that you can still access but it's like you gotta you gotta be willing to kind of like sink really pretty deep here um into these emotional experiences um and so there might be a need for some inner child work with that um and uh, yeah another message um of something that just came to my mind that i've <sighs> had an insight about before is that um wanting and desiring is really the same thing as missing something so what i mean by that is is it possible to want something if you aren't if you have never even had it before <laughs> let me rephrase that is it possible to want something 
if you're not aware that it exists? I would say probably not. And so in order to be aware that something exists, you have to have some kind of experience of it. Okay? So let me let me see if I can make this make sense in a better way. Um, it's like, okay, like let's say you feel lonely, right? How would you feel, how would you even know to feel lonely unless you felt not lonely before? Like how would you even register that you're lonely unless you have felt the opposite of that thing? before you know like how would you even know that this is not what you want if you haven't had what you want before this is kind of the same thing i was getting at with time it's like it's like linear time that doesn't really exist um so it's like whatever you want you have had before and you will have again okay so it's impossible to want something that you can't have because you've already had it, otherwise you wouldn't want it. Okay. I hope you can kind of understand what I'm saying. I'm probably not articulating it in the best way, but it's like, in order to even conceptualize of something, like, it has to be possible. You have to have it has to exist in a way. So if you can even conceptualize of something that is unwanted, then the opposite has to exist as well. Okay? So, whatever you feel like you can't obtain or you can't reach, um, it doesn't make sense because you wouldn't want it if you couldn't have it like you wouldn't even know to want it unless you knew that it existed right and really your wanting is just a kind of missing or a longing for what you once had that you feel like you don't have anymore because all of us once at one point felt you know this sense of connection and oneness and love and all of these things and we feel pain because we don't feel that anymore but we wouldn't even register that pain if there wasn't something before us like before we that pain that was the thing that we enjoyed do you know what i mean it's like we wouldn't even register it as pain if we didn't know the opposite thing existed okay so the message there is that whatever has once been felt can be felt again because time <laughs> because time is not linear right or we have a perception of it being linear but in reality it's all over the place okay time is the past and the future and the now all in one okay so <laughs> There's a real lot of really esoteric messages coming up here. I hope that you can take something from that. Um, with that. Um, we have... Yeah, like this kind of dark black spot over here. Representing the shadow, right? And again, that's connected to this um, blue line. So whatever lies in your subconscious is your key to unlocking whatever it is you've been wanting to unlock. Um, and we also have some shapes. We have a circle and a triangle, purple circle and triangle. Um, so shapes like ba kind of basic shapes like this kind of talk about to me um kind of like the building blocks <laughs> right like those little toys that you would play with as a kid like the building blocks of reality 
um, like, rearranging, I think, is a word that's coming up, like, rearrange, like, physically rearrange some things in your environment, in your house, um, rearrange your reality. Yeah, rearrange. Rearrange your reality, rearrange uh, your environment, you know, quite literally, like, do whatever that means for you, clean your room or reorganize your room or, um, spend some time in a place you haven't been to before, rearrange your schedule, uh, rearrange your thoughts, just like rearrange, okay? And the more that you rearrange, then the more new experiences will be able to be known by you, which are really old experiences because time is a fucking endless loop, okay? <laughs> But it's like also always expanding because it's like, it's like, it's not a, like a perfect, like I wouldn't, I don't know what the right like shape or conceptualization of time is, but it's not like this loop that's set in stone and it's like done. It's like a loop, maybe a figure eight if you want to think of it that way, but it's like, a loop that's like expanding right and it's like more things keep adding keep getting added to time so it's like time itself is growing but there's no beginning and end right it's like there's no um perception of linear uh, yeah there's no true like linearity in time but it's also always expanding. So you're always adding more to time. Like you're, <laughs> we're adding more to our future, to our present, to our past, because time is expanding. Like the universe itself is expanding. Um, even though it's infinite and even though <laughs> it's all one, it's also expanding. <laughs> Listen, I'm just trying to relay the messages I'm getting. I know this is kind of up there kind of stuff. So if it's not resonating, that's okay. Just let it sink in. Take some time. Come back to it. Um, but yeah, I'm just some crazy stuff. Okay. Um, what else? Is there anything else here? There's some like orange kind of like fiery energy here and there. Um which can be either anger or excitement or both <laughs> kind of similar um emotions in a way and that's another another um insight i actually had this morning that i wrote down um is that a lot of emotions that we think are like opposite of each other actually there's like a very thin line between them like there's a very thin line between excitement and fear for instance there's a very thin line between joy and sadness even um there's a thin line between um love and hate right they're both states of passion um there's a thin line between chaos and calm it's like all of these things that we think are opposites it's actually a very thin line between them and it's really just a matter of perspective like um like you feel jittery in your uh, body you can say am i feeling anxious or am i feeling excited you know and sometimes it's just a matter of adding a different perspective of like oh maybe i could actually think of this as excitement and that's not to say that you can't ever be anxious because you definitely can um but it's just adding a bit of curiosity to that to say maybe this isn't a bad thing maybe this could also be excitement um you know like maybe this anger could also be passion um mm -hmm. maybe this sadness could be 
um, kind of like a bittersweet um, moment or something. Like, you know, it's like finding the finding the opposite, but it's not even really the opposite. It's just like f looking at um, your own perspectives and like what is the raw experience here and what meaning am I adding to it? And if you can kind of dissect that meaning, a lot of times the raw experience itself has the potential to be both either positive or negative or both. So it's about dissecting that meaning that you're adding to something and then seeing if you can add a different meaning to it. Okay. Um, but I do see a lot of opportunities for you, like using your passions um, to, to grow things, um, right? And again, with this like whole, I'm just going to come back to this whole green bush thing that I had going on because I was kind of, it was kind of starting to be like a bush for a second and it was like it was like a bunch of different things but I like feel like there's things that you've been trying to grow right in your life trying to manifest and maybe the fruits of these things hasn't the fruits of your labors haven't really been um received it's like you put all this effort in and it kind of feels like it doesn't really get anywhere um with regards to something that you're trying to do it could be a business idea or venture or um relationship i feel it feels more like work related potentially or just like yeah like something you're trying to do for your career or something like that um that's just like not taking off um but it's like, again, you're kind of laying the groundwork for what you are eventually going to paint on top of and, like, do something completely different with. So it's not to say that you have to stop doing it right now, but it's just, like, realize that whatever you're expecting to see payoff from, it's not going to be what you're expecting, okay? Like, you're going to see payoff, but it's gonna come in a different direction than what you were expecting okay so don't get too caught up about trying to make something happen in a specific way um and instead be open to what other ways that it could come but still like put your effort in it's like it's like if you're you know gardening something it's like you're still gonna tend to your garden right but you're going to keep an open mind and say maybe this isn't going to uh, maybe this um i don't know strawberry bush isn't going to produce me any strawberries but i'm going to keep watering it you know maybe you thought it was a strawberry bush but it ends up being a blueberry bush like you know what i mean like you're gonna the more effort you put into something and the more you keep nurturing something you're gonna start to realize that it's it's different than what you expected and that's a good thing so don't get too caught up in trying to find the strawberries because it might not be a strawberry bush it might be a blueberry bush i don't know just an example <laughs> okay <laughs> but um yeah Let's see if there's anything else it might be a pretty much what I'm getting. Um, something maybe with sound for some of you. I'm seeing like, um, kind of like sound vibration with this zigzag up here. And it's orange. Some of you might want to do um, like sound therapy for your, your sacral chakra um, for some of you. Um, exploring sound as a way to heal, um, as a way to get in touch with your emotions, dance therapy or voice therapy, singing, um, or just toning, like doing mantras or, um, certain meditative sounds that you can 
you can do or listen to um, might be of interest to you. Okay. I think that's the pretty much majority of what I'm getting. Um, inner child, again, just going to say it again. See if there's anything that you can kind of do for your inner child to let them kind of explore and play. Get in touch with what you, what the inner child feels and what the inner child wants. Mm. You have a certain amount of like protection. Um, it's like you feel very protective of yourself in a way, like you're trying to protect what is vulnerable about you, but also like you're trying to protect the your own joy and your own positive feelings. Um, and that can, in some ways, be a good thing because the more protected you are, then the more safer you feel, um, but it can also, you just need to be aware that sometimes too much protection can lead to disconnection, um, because I'm just looking at this, um, again, this black circle, there's kind of like some spikes coming off of it, which made me think of protection, so, um, like, you know, the, the, the key to connection is connecting to this, you know, this vulnerable inner sadness here, right? That's the key out of it, out of this mm, tight enclosure. Um, so you're going to have to kind of bypass your own protection mechanisms in order to find that connection that you might be looking for, maybe with someone in specific, if there's someone that you've been trying to connect with um, for a while or just someone new in your life, or just in general, if you want to feel more connected to people, you might have to, like, um, yeah, like, find a way to cut through your own protection mechanisms in order to get that actual connection, okay? But if, for some of you, if you do feel like you need a certain amount of protection, then that is definitely something that you can do for yourself. You can try to ground and protect yourself energetically, but just be aware that there will come a time when you need to let go of some of that protection in order to um, connect with someone on a more intimate level, okay? Okay, I think I'm done. I think that's all I'm going to say for now. Um, but yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope that you got something from it. Um, I'll probably do one more like Passover of the um, painting so that you can look at it again if see if there's anything else that stands out to you. Um, and I hope that you gained some clarity, some insight from this. hope that you felt some kind of energetic purge maybe or release. Um, and if you like this, you know, be sure to like it and subscribe. Um, we'll be doing other fun things in the future. Um, I wanted to do a video soon of uh, about kind of like a how-to video, how to use um, creativity as a healing practice and art as a healing practice. Obviously, this is one example, but there's a lot of different other things that you can do. It doesn't just have to be painting, so I want to kind of make a video talking about different um, modalities and exercises that you can do um, to integrate art and creativity into your um, your own healing practice or your shadow work or your, um, you know, self-awareness practice, whatever it is you have going on. Um, so make sure to subscribe if you want to see that because I will be putting that together as soon as I can. Um, and I hope to see you again sometime very soon. Stay healthy, stay grounded, stay well, um, and blessings be to you. <laughs> Namaste.